Sports. Over a decade of fights featuring the best action and most exciting moments. It's all here on the best of World Class Championship Boxing. He's got to get off of those ropes or he's going to get knocked out. Presenting the undefeated. On the best of WCCB, Teddy Reed and Terrence Coffin in a light welterweight championship bout. The Nigerian nightmare Samuel Peter competes in just his fourth pro fight. Former world heavyweight champion Henry Akinwande is in action against the veteran Kenny Craven. But first, the punches fly fast and furious in a special junior middleweight bout. Las Vegas is the backdrop for our first bout. As we head inside, the Aladdin, Marcos Primera, makes his way to the ring, followed by his opponent, Dante Craig. Before we get this one started, let's see how these fighters match up on the tail of the tape. Craig is five years younger and two pounds heavier than Primera. The height and reach statistics are even. Primera has not got power and can end this one in a hurry, but Craig was a member of the 2000 U.S. Olympic boxing team, making him no pushover. Primera comes in at 151 pounds. He wears white and black trunks and hails from Raleigh, North Carolina. His record consists of 13 wins, three losses, and one draw. Eight big wins coming by way of knockout. Dante Craig went in at 153 and a half pounds, resides in Cincinnati, Ohio. He's an impressive eight and one with seven knockouts. Let's go ringside to get this one underway. Primera catching the wrath of Toby Gibson. And we are underway here. This fight is scheduled for eight rounds. As we said last time out, Dante Craig, one by way of second round knockout. Marcos Primera, a decision loser to Luis Colazo last time out, just a couple of months ago. I think I like about all of these uh, Duva fighters and Tommy Brooks trained fighters, they, they, I like the way they use their left jab. And again, it's not just a, a flicking jab, it's a powerful jab, which uh, does some damage and is a range finder and sets up other stuff like that. Dante Craig moving forward. Primera, very slick, a very intelligent fighter. Craig moving behind the right hand that time. Scoring with a short combination. He's blinking a little bit to Primera on the left eye. And you know, Smitty, I, I, I said at the beginning that Primera fought tall. And that's the way he fights, but here he's coming down to the size of Dante Craig. Is that a good strategy? I don't think so. I think whenever you have an advantage, try to use it. Nice combination. Again, Dante not wasting anything. A little wide in his stance. Trying to set up that left hook. Romero has his hands held very low, and that's dangerous against Dante Craig. Craig has six... KOs in his eight wins. A nice left hook. I like the way through the combination. Didn't land it flush, but again came back with the left hook after the right hand. Primera beginning to clown a little bit, trying to distract Dante Craig at this point. He tastes a little power already, and he doesn't like it. Craig working behind that jab again. Trying to throw that right hand behind the jab. And a nice little sneaky uppercut by Dante on the inside. Step up with it. Step up with it. See, Romero has that left hand so low, Smitty. He's just begging Craig to throw a right hand. Yeah, not quick enough uh, of a fighter to get away with doing that. Again, not in this division. Dante very accurate with his punches. Not the fastest fighter in the world, but very accurate. Doesn't waste any shots. Nice left jab. Snaps the head back of Primera. Nice stiff one. See the area around the nose of Primera is somewhat red already here in round one. Nice left hand. This is with a right, just whizzed by the dome of Primera. Yeah, that, that was a wicked right that uh, missed. Good opening round for Dante Craig. Really doing what he wants to offensively with Marcos Primera. The jab effective, the right hand as well. Round two will be next from the Aladdin. <laughs> Two underway. 
Dante Craig in the black trunks with the red trim. Marcos Primera in the black trunks with the white trim. Primera turning southpaw here, trying to give Dante Craig something to think about. It was all Dante Craig in round one at Primera. Showing early desperation, in my opinion. Yeah, leaving himself wide open for a combination. He's uh, his head is the forward. It's already uh, has some swelling around the uh, the eyes, and I think that Dante's too disciplined to fall for any of that stuff. Nice left hook by Craig. Romero just trying to use everything he knows. Now he's waving Dante Craig in, and Craig scoring with the body shots. I'm holding on, Craig. And Primero holding the left hand of Dante Craig. is breaking down, systematically breaking down from era. Still early in the fight, but dominating. Sharp right hand by Dante Craig scores. Romero still coming forward. He's actually talking to Dante Craig, telling him, come on, come on. You know, while he's talking, Dante is uh, punching and landing good shots. Landed a nice hook to the body in there. They told uh, Primera to come forward. He's the bigger, stronger man. I don't know if he's the stronger man, to be honest with you. Doesn't look like it. Dante needs to throw the uh, left right and then come back with the left hook. Nice right hand again scores by Dante Craig. Oh, if the antics of Primera have thrown Dante Craig off a little bit, maybe a little bit. Tempo being distracted by the antics of Primera. Primera needs to let that right hand go. Craig slipping Primera's jet easily. Left hand followed from the right hand. And Craig scoring to the skull of Primera. Good body shot that time by Dante Craig. And Primera again talks to him, says, come on, let's get it, let's get it on. Primera's got to start punching back. Kobe says, get him up. I thought that uh, was a clean shot. It was right on the borderline. You can see that uh, Primera has the trunks a little high. Just been watching Craig again. I, I hate to keep harping on it, but you can see that amateur experience, a good head movement, the, the yep. balance. Pivot. Always in position to punch, good defense, good ring generalship, and again, only less than 10 fights in his career. Jab of Primera becoming uh, a factor here. Not a damaging punch, but certainly getting it in, distracting Dante Craig with it. Tip with a nice left hook there. Dante said that to look out for that left hook. Romero has his head unprotected, bending at the waist. Worst possible scenario for Primera. As Dante Craig beginning to pick it up a little bit here at the end of round two. Fight is scheduled for eight rounds here at the Aladdin. Time! Round three underway here at the Aladdin. Larry Michael with... James Smith, Smitty, CSI Sports presentation of world-class championship boxing. In the ring right now, Dante Craig in the black trunks with the red trim and Marcos Primera in the black trunks with the white trim. Dante Craig has really schooled him through two rounds, Smitty. And right now schooling him with good utilization of the left jab. And hooks also hooked off the jab. And there is that's a good, good work with the left by Dante. To the body, to the head. When Dante Cra Craig comes in with that jab, Primera is standing there just turning his shoulder. Should he be moving his feet? Either that or just, you know, the best thing to do against a jabber is to jab back. Low blow there by Primera. Toby Gibson. People haven't had a good fight all night. Let's give him one. Let's go. <laughs> Toby Gibson with an editorial comment there. I thought our fights have been pretty good so far. Is he going to be a journalist or a referee? What's he doing? I really like the way Dante Craig fights within himself. I mean, not out of control at all. I like the way he fights in little circles, too. You know, well, one of the things you see in a young fighter sometimes is they go straight back. He fights in these little circles, you know, and good balance and just... Uh, doing a good job of uh, when you score a fight the, the ring generalship and certainly he's uh, dominant in that fashion and won both rounds easily. Dante Craig has never been eight rounds the scheduled distance here tonight. So we'll see if that is a factor as the fight wears on. Shouldn't bother him because he's controlling the pace. He's a young kid so I mean it shouldn't bother him at all and again he's he's controlling the flow and fighting at his own pace. He's six rounds once. Right back. Right back. 
And beyond that, four-round knockout, the longest he's spent in the ring, professional. So, Romero continues to throw that left jab out. Ineffective as it is, it does distract Dante Craig somewhat. A body shot covered nicely by Dante Craig. Finally throwing some, putting his punches together decently, and landing a good shot to Romero. Romero becoming uh, more aggressive, coming forward and scoring. Scores with a right hand that time. Dante Craig not punching back right now. Taking some punishment. And loading up on his shots. Finally, Premier with his hands held high and swinging for the fences here at the Aladdin. Dante Craig might be a little tired right now, facing some fatigue here in the third round. His punch output is not there, and Primera scores with a right hand. Big right hand. And Dante needs to tuck his chin in. He's sticking that head up a little bit. And the confidence of Primera growing here in round three. Remember Dante, we mentioned, stopped once in his third professional fight. Primera having his best action of the fight. Good round for Marcos Primera, scoring towards the latter part of the round. We've got a fight here. We'll be back with more World Championship Boxing. And I want to see. Let's go. Give it to them. We're underway. Round four. This fight is scheduled for eight rounds tonight. Smitty through three. How do you have it scored? Well, Dante easily won the first two rounds, but Romero came on and was the busier, more effective fighter in round three. So I have it 29 to 28 for Dante. What from the mouth of Dante Craig? And Primera has the momentum right now. Both fighters getting uh, a little bit more flat-footed now, so expect more power. Craig has really slowed down here midway through round three and continuing to round four. What do you suppose he's thinking right now, Spade? Well, again, he, he tasted some pretty good right hands from Premier and some body work. And again, right now, both of these fighters are really throwing powerful shots. You can see they're flat-footed and they're, they're concentrating more on power than anything else right now. And so at least he's gotten back in this fight and taking some uh, chances now, Premier, but taking chances in a different fashion, a more poised fashion than the heebie-jeebie stuff we saw earlier. Premier has uh, found a home for that right hand, and Dante Craig has been affected by the punches of Primer. Make no mistake about it. Primer doubling up that jab. And Primera trying to be first right now, trying to initiate the action. It's an effective style for him, Smitty. Once again, he is leading in this round so far. He's been the busier of the two, no doubt. He's just missing with the right hand. And that eight-round distance might become a factor here with Dante Craig because he's looking for two. Big right hand by Primera. And Dante Craig is in trouble. He needs to hold on. In a world of trouble from the right hand. Oh, man, that was a huge right hand of Primera ducking under. And you can see the left eye of Dante Craig is swelling up already. Primera knows he's in trouble. Craig needs to survive this round. Big left hand sends Craig back. Upset in the making here at the Aladdin. Craig goes down. Craig goes down. featuring the six foot seven inch Henry Akinwande. But first, let's go back to the ring for the decision to make this one official. And ladies and gentlemen, two minutes, 28 seconds of round number four. 
Referee Toby Gibson calls a help to the belt, and your winner by technical knockout, his 14th victory as a professional, Marcos the Terminator Primera. Primera earns the upset victory. Now we take a closer look as we break this fight down. At times, Craig defended with both hands instead of blocking with one and throwing with the other. And at other times, he just didn't defend himself at all. Craig was faced with adversity for one of the few times in his career and did not respond well. Dante Craig was a heavy favorite in this fight, but after a lackluster performance like that, one has to think he was looking past Marcos Primera. Coming up next, Kenny Craven has a tall task at hand against the tough veteran who knows what it takes to be a world champion. Henry Akinwande stands in his way. It's Akinwande against Craven in a championship bout scheduled for 12 rounds. Inside the Moon Sports Arena in Tallahassee, Florida, Kenny Craven awaits the entrance of one of the biggest men in the sport. The sculpted Henry Akinwande makes his final pre-fight preparations, and Kenny Craven paces awaiting the bell. Before we get this heavyweight matchup started, let's see how these two match up on the tail of the tape. Akinwande dominates this tail of the tape. Even though he's five years older, he has the advantage in each and every category. He's five inches taller, has a five-inch reach advantage, and is 24 pounds heavier than Craven. There you go. Six foot seven of him. <laughs> Henry Akinwande. Pretty imposing figure. Well, we're ready to go. We'll throw it up to Dave Dunaway. Ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds for the WBC Heavyweight Championship. In the red corner, weighing 224 pounds, wearing the white and black trunks, from Ellisville, Mississippi, with 16 wins, six losses, and 14 knockouts, Ken Craven! Craven in the red corner. His opponent tonight, weighing at 248 pounds, wearing the black and white trunks, from Tallahassee, Florida, with a record of 37 wins, one loss, and 23 knockouts. Henry Akinwande! Akinwande in the blue corner. Ready to get it on from the moon here in Tallahassee, Florida. Henry Akinwande, former WBO champion, in the black trunks, just look for the six foot seven guy against Ken Craven in the white, the shorter guy. Henry Akinwande will try to utilize the left jab early in most of his uh, fights and turn over that big right hand. And there's a lot of leverage and a lot of power between the, you know, usually tall guys don't have power. Henry Akinwande, 23 KOs and a lot of power. Just ask uh, Jeremy Williams and a, and a number of other heavyweights. Look at a stiff left jab, snapping a hit back of Ken Craven by Akinwande. And Craven prides himself on being a good boxer. He felt the outbox uh, butter beam in that first round, and that's what he's going to try to do over here. Come here and box with, and try to fight down. Try to fight down. Make himself short. Don't make himself tall against a very tall Henry Akawande. Needs to come in, though, with some punches, or he's going to get hit with that right hand of Akinwande. Uh, he's, he's trying. He's punching. There's too, a little too far outside. It's so difficult to get in. David Tua found that out against uh, Lennox uh, Lewis. And right now, yeah, Craven will find it out. It's very tough. You need to go low and try to land uh, some of your jabs. There's a sweeping a hook Three. by Ken Craven, a record of 16 and 6, 14 KOs. Guy who's coming off a first-round stoppage, too. There's that right hand of Akinwande. He's a little long. When he turns it over, though, when he gets in positions and turns that right hand over, it's a thing of beauty and generates a lot of power. And, you know, you look at a guy like 6'7", Akinwande, but look at Craven. He's, he's six feet tall. He's not a small guy. No, he's not. Hooked by uh, Akinwande, then a right hand. Round number one, scheduled for 12, Fecker Box Championship. Henry Akinwande, the former WBO champion, only one loss. That to Lennox Lewis in the fight where he grabbed and held. And I asked 
Craven, uh, Craven about what he knows about Akawandi. I saw tape of the Lennox Lewis fight and also the Scott Welch fight. I know he has a good read, good boxing, a good one-two. Yeah. Right and now he's, he's tasting it. Yeah, yeah. he is tasting it. And right now he just, again, he, he all of a sudden is realizing who he's in against, I think. What he needs to try to do is get inside. He's going to get uh, killed along those ropes by Akinwandi, who's a pretty good finisher when he gets a guy in trouble. Akinwandi, again, a guy that uh, you see always in very good shape. He's had a long career. He's originally from England. Dulwich, England, yeah. But grew up in uh, Nigeria. And he liked to go back there sometime, back to Lagos. In fact, he goes back there and he takes boxing equipment. And he said there's tremendous... Oh, good right, right hand. Right hand by Akinwandi. Craven hurt left hook. Uppercut. Right. Big right hand. Akinwandi can finish, too. He's going back outside to get some leverage. He hurt... Craven hurt him again with a right. Another big right. 25 seconds left to go in round number one. He's already tasted the power of former champion Henry Akinwandi. Craven on the ropes. Hit with an uppercut. He's ready to go. Akinwandi yeah. looking to set up the uh, right hand. Craven's ready to go uppercut. Will he survive round number one? Looks like it. But a big finish to the first round by Henry Akinwandi. Referee telling him you must fight back. And he makes it through barely, if at all. He's on the canvas. He's in trouble. I don't know if he'll make it into round two. He's really hurt by those shots. Seven. Can't be saved by the bell. Referee picking up the count. Tommy Kimmins. He's, he can't go. He I think, I think go. he's out on his feet. And he stops it. Round number one. And you know, Smitty, exactly what Akawanda told he was working on, that uppercut. The fight inside is the punch that finally finished off Ken Craven. Well, let's look at what happened. You see Akinwandi, there's the long jab. He's looking to turn over that right hand. Setting it, and, and Craven, there's the right hand. Bam! He's right now hurt. Now, right at the end, there's a slapping left hook. Trying to set up the bigger. There's the uppercut, though. Didn't look like much, but it, there's a lot of leverage and weight behind that. Le slapping left hook, right hand, big uppercut. And right now, Craven's out. He doesn't know what to do. And Akinwandi, oh, right on top of the head with a, a big right hand, then an uppercut. Referee Tommy Kimmins comes in, but it's too late. Craven's already out. Let's toss it to the ring announcer to make this one official. And the winner by knockout at the end of the first round, Henry Akinwande. Akinwande continues his pursuit to reclaim the heavyweight championship of the world. Akinwande proved to be the bigger, stronger, faster fighter and finished off Craven with relative ease. After a dominating performance like this, you wonder how he ever lost the title in the first place. Akinwande victorious in round one. Now we take a closer look as we break this fight down. Akinwande was able to get full extension on his punches, stunning Craven and forcing him to cover up. But he didn't cover up well enough because Akinwande was able to land a shot to the back of the head and then a final uppercut to send Craven sprawling on the ropes. Henry Akinwande destroys Kenny Craven in the very first round. Samuel Peter competes in just his fourth pro fight. Samuel Peter, the future heavyweight champion of the world, meets up with Shannon He, a local Florida fighter, in his pro debut. Fighters are ready to go, but before we get this one started, let's see how these heavyweights match up on the tail of the tape. Both fighters are just 21 years old. Peter gives away two inches in height, but holds a two-inch edge in reach and a 14-pound weight advantage. Shannon might be in over his head against the power-punching Nigerian native Peter, who's looking to keep his perfect record intact. At this stage in his career, Peter was a promising young heavyweight with a dream to be the best in the world. That dream would become a reality down the road, but first, he had to take care of newcomer Shannon He. He has drawn one heck of a tough matchup in his pro debut, but to be the best, you must beat everyone put in front of you. Let's toss it up to the ring announcer to get this heavyweight matchup started. Introducing first, out of the red corner, weighing 223 pounds, wearing the black trunks. He comes to us from Miami, Florida. Let's welcome Shannon Head. 
His opponent out of the blue corner, weighing in at 237 pounds, wearing the blue trunks trimmed in gold. He comes all the way from Nigeria, now fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada. He is undefeated in his professional career. Three wins, no losses with three knockouts. Let's welcome Samuel Peter. Four rounds in the heavyweight division. All right, we're set to go. Let's go. We get into round one in this heavyweight encounter. Pro debut for Shannon Heat and for uh, Samuel Peter. It is his fourth fight as a pro. Peter represented Nigeria in the Olympics uh, that just concluded uh, last year and was eliminated in the second round of the Olympics. And right now, Shannon heading for him and uh, trying to get a little done. Shows us his power very, very early. And Shannon shows us he's got uh, somewhat of a chin. He didn't think he was going to get up from that shot. Let's see if Peter can finish him off. Sh Samuel Peter, who has a very good right hand and is showing it to you. And a good left, stiff left jab that's been snapping the head of Heed back. Watch the stiff jab of Peter that sets everything up. Kenny Adams, the uh, U.S. Olympic trainer in 1988, one of the fine trainers, not only as an amateur trainer, but he's had many champions as a professional trainer. Very high on Samuel Peter. Slim Robinson also, where yeah. he used to be with Razor Ruddock. Big right hand by Peter, and he goes down again in a heap. Shannon having a tough first round. I don't think he's going to get through it. Might not get through the next 10 seconds. He doesn't. So Samuel Peter gets the job done and gets it done quickly. Hey, can I have a stool here? We'll take a look at what happened in this fight and how uh, Peter got it done. See Samuel going straight back. A little mistake on his part, but watch the power. There's the right. Slips a shot. Trying to set up that right. There it is. Down goes Heed in a hurry. Looks a little surprised there final punches that ended this fight. See Pat, Peter trying to set there. Really nice right hand. Comes back with the jab. Beautiful right hand, overhand right. In the 2000 Olympics in Sydney, Australia, Peter represented Nigeria. That experience, coupled with his successful amateur career, clearly put him on a different talent level than his opponent tonight. And it was that previous experience that allowed Peter to control this matchup from the start and deliver a devastating knockout blow. Coming up next, it's Teddy Reed versus Terrence Colton in a light welterweight championship showdown. But first, we head back to the ring for the decision to make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jorge Alonso stops this contest at 1 minute, 30 seconds of the first round. Your winner by technical knockout and undefeated Samuel Peter. Peter was relaxed and in complete control of this fight from the opening bell. His record improves to 4-0 with four knockouts. Peter is still perfect. Now we take...